Hey guys, Darren back again. Uh, this video is a bit of a part two from a previous one I did um, where we converted the Saturn power supply to uh, like an internal modded one and took out the original. So this one, we're gonna go through the same sort of process in the Sega Dreamcast and pull out its internal power supply and replace it with a custom made one that we can run here in Australia off, uh, you know, off 12 volts. So let's get on with it. We're also going to pull out the GD EMU that we put into the PAL Dreamcast on a previous episode, pull it out, put into the 3D printed parts, and put them all into here and transfer it over to the black one. So that's the plan for today. Um, so this is pretty dirty. We're going to give this a clean as well. But you know what? First things first is just open it up. So it's pretty straightforward. Go ahead and take the four screws out, one underneath the modem, and three around the body. This is an NTSC uh, USA one, as you can see down here, revision one. So when you're gonna use the GD EMU um, replacements, it's best to get a revision one console. They just seem to be more compatible. Okay, so let's take this apart. Lift the lid. There you go. So, pretty clean but we're going to give this whole thing a wash the top side is quite dirty um, now inside here let's have a look what we've got so um, you know the GD ROM drive um, I don't I can't remember if this one works or not I don't think it does so it's perfect candidate we're going to pull this out and put the GD EMU in in its place but what we're going to really focus on is the power supply so we're going to pull this whole thing apart take it out and we're going to inject the, the correct DC voltages down at this end off our uh, mini ATX Pico power supply. 3.3 volts, five volts, ground, and 12. So it's pretty easy. Um, some of the satins have a nine volt pin, and in that case, you just use a 7809 to run the nine volts. But in this case, we're not gonna need it. So it should be fairly straightforward. So let's take it out. Take out the clip. Um, Take out the screws that hold it. There's one down there. And there's one up the back there. Take those out. Um, there's a clip here on the side. So just kind of hold that open uh, as you lift it up. And kind of lift at this end as well because this is where all the tension is on the pins and you'll crack the board if you're not kind of careful. So lift it up like that and the whole power supply comes out. So we just, we keep this for our voltage reference at the bottom here. So I'll show you what I mean exactly. Uh, I think you can see that, it's pretty focused, there you go. So these are the pinouts and these are our voltages across the pins. And that's all we're aiming for today. So keep your power supply handy as a reference, um, but we're not gonna need that really again. The plastic tray we'll, we will use, so keep that handy. We're probably also going to replace the um, the battery here at the front while we're at it because this is rechargeable and it's pretty much dead by now. These things are quite old, about you know 17 years old or something. So we've got some batteries, we've got some sockets. We're going to go ahead and do that as well. But um, let's keep pulling this thing apart. So take out the GD ROM drive. Three screws, two at the front here and just one at the back up in this corner put them aside now if you kind of hold the whole drive um, and lift a bit of a wiggle the whole assembly will just come out in one piece so they're just held in by one connector on the board it's quite a nice design actually i think that's really good you know sega came a long way from um, the Mega CD, basically, their first CD console. Into the Saturn, they refined it a little bit. And then in, into the finally into the Dreamcast, they really got it right. It was a good unit. Um, not the most reliable laser mechanism, but the assembly itself is very good. So I quite liked the design of that. And I think they did a really good job. All right, so we may as well clean the bottom case as well if it needs it. So probably need to pull the whole thing apart. And this is optional for you. You don't really need to go that far. You could leave it like this, 
do the battery if you want to, which we'll do in a minute. But you could really just put your GD-ROM drive in here and go ahead and install the power supply, which we're going to get to in a second. But I'm going to probably keep digging, go a bit further, and uh, give, give, the, give the bottom case a clean it as the, at the same time. So you can skip ahead if you like. I'll put a time code up on the screen of where to skip to. But for those who want to see the whole disassembly, keep watching. So we're going to do the switch. Keep your screws separate as well. Kind of remember the order in which you take them out. I tend to line them up in the order that I took things out and you know maybe put it in a container if you want to as well. And pull the switch out. So we're going to have to pull out all of this. So. That screw is a little bit stubborn. Let's just get that final screw there. Okay, there it goes. Disconnect your side plug. Disconnect your ribbon. Oh, there you go. That just came out of the board. Now we lift the board out. The gauge metal that, so it's a good heat sink. It touches the CPU, uh, the chips, and here and here, and transfers the heat across. So. That's why that's so heavy and solid. Uh, the front came off, which is good. We'll wash that. Um, let's take this whole board out. Okay, so you just lift and tilt it, and it'll just pop out. The metal clips here just get a little bit stuck at the back, but that's no big deal. It all looks pretty good. Always take the opportunity to inspect boards when you take them out. Just give them a quick eyeball look, because if there's some corrosion, or if there's some obvious damage, you know, you kind of need to fix it or at least um, clean it up and get it working or, or not throw it out and use another board because the time you invest isn't worth it otherwise. Okay, well, that all looks pretty good. So this is probably ready for washing. Just move those bits out of the way. That comes out as well, which is great. Yeah, we'll give this a whole wash. Um, I may as well pull the fan out just to make that easier to, to clean. I've already gone ahead and given this a really good dust up and yeah, you know, it's come up really well. So that's all you need to sort of do with those parts. All right, so this is all gonna go off to wash and we'll come back and we'll start the reassembly and the install of the mod. Okay, so while we wait for the uh, you know plastics to dry outside, we're gonna take a look at the battery and pull it out and replace it with um, an equivalent rechargeables. There's your positive two terminals. That'll be the negative, the ground plane. Uh, so let's pull this apart. I like to always add a bit of solder before I completely remove something. I think it, um, it helps to remove it. Just use a basic solder pump if you have one. Sort of. These things aren't the best, are they? I've got a proper desoldering gun just next to us, but you know, for just two or three points, it sort of doesn't feel necessary to fire it up. Okay, so once you've uh, persevered and got the joints pretty clean, um, it's worth just grabbing hold of them, giving them a, a bit of a wiggle, making sure they're all loose. Uh, it's worth doing that with all desoldering, really. Just make sure the pins are loose before you try to pull them out. Uh, give it a wiggle and then slowly back the whole thing out. Like that. Right, so that's ready to go. Um, then all we need to do is pull our old battery apart. Just got some small pliers and all I did was grab hold of it and then roll it forward. The original is an ML2032, just as I thought, three volts. Try and track down a three volt replacement. There are a few options, um, but you know what? The ML2032 is pretty much the one you should go for. Maxell make them. Uh, yeah, they're still making them and they're made in Japan. They're quite good batteries. So that's exactly what I've gone ahead and done. I've picked up a brand new ML2032 and I've got a nice little vertical uh, battery holder here to install it. So all we're going to do is match positive to positive, which is the top side. 
and that'll go in like so. And then our pins become positive and our back becomes negative and we're good to go. That'll simply just sit in like that. It should go straight in and it's a nice clean modification. Okay. Now, before we go any further and actually install the battery and, and that's, sorry, that's actually a good reason not to install the battery. We just have to make sure we haven't short circuited anything here. Okay, so we grab our multimeter and we put it on a logic measurement, uh, which could be labeled, you know, logic or that sort of position for you. Um, something that's gonna give you a continuity check. I just use logic. And that, that way, when I touch the probes together, I get a beep. So you can test point to point uh, circuits. So we know that's ground and we know this should be five. So they should not connect. And the same with that pin, that should not connect. But these two should connect together, which they do. So, you know, just make sure that you're getting a separation between those pins. Uh, that's vitally important. Otherwise, you'll destroy the battery as soon as it's installed. So that's done now. We're safe to install the battery and battery mode is complete. That's, that's it. Nice and simple. Can be replaced in the future. Um, the plastic shell casing is very cheap. Um, I'll post a link to where to get those. These batteries are actually quite expensive. They're actually around $3 Australian. You might get that for $2 US if you hunt around, but yeah, they're not cheap those. So um, it's up to you whether you do it properly. Do not put in a CR2032 because that's a non-rechargeable battery. And this charging circuit, which comes off that resistor, that will, it's feeding current and voltage into the battery. So if you have a non-rechargeable CR2032, you'll destroy the battery and potentially leak it all over the board. So do not do that. Okay, so while we're here, we may as well quickly pull out the ribbon. Just remember which way it went. Um, work out which is the pin side. Just spray a bit of isopropyl alcohol on the pins. Clean the pins. And put it back in. It's just something I like to do while you have the opportunity to clean things. You really should because um, it can solve many problems down the road. Okay, that took five seconds. That's done. Okay, so we've got our parts back. Uh, they look really good. And we're going to just start to refit everything. Put that in. Let's put the board in. Uh, we'll put our fan back in. And fit your top shield. Make sure that sits flat. Uh, your front panel actually sits, um, the front lip actually sits underneath that. Uh, so just go ahead and put that plastic piece in. Get it sitting nicely. Like that. Um, the screws go right down through it. Then you put this back in, just sort of rock it into place and it'll sit there nicely. I tried to do it before and it was a bit fiddly. So that's the order in which I recommend you do it. Um, then just put your screws back in. Okay. So they're all in, they're all, they're all nipped up. Uh, the front sits flat and it sits nicely like that. So just check all the basics. Plug your cable back in, plug your ribbon back in. Uh, we've got the motherboard uh, edge screws. So, you know, we may as well actually keep going and put those back in. The two silver ones on the left here and the black ones were everywhere else. So I'll just quickly finish that off, get it back to the status quo, and then we can continue. Okay guys, welcome back. If you're joining us here, you might have skipped forward to the power supply section. So that's what we're gonna get on with. So first thing you're gonna need is obviously your, your, uh, your Pico ATX power supply. I'll put a link in the description of where to get that. You're gonna need a, um, a power supply to run the whole console. And that's the whole concept of this mod. It's to pick up a local 
uh, easy to find power supply that plugs straight into the wall. You know, it's just a standard sort of uh, connector on one end, straight into the wall. And it's gonna output 12 volts DC at five amps. So uh, this is not my power supply. This is just one I picked up. 12 volts DC, five amps. It's important to get a five amp one. Uh, you might get away with a three amp one, but I'd highly recommend the extra current of five. Um, trust me on that, just get a five. It's pretty common to get a 12 five combination, so get that. And the output is center positive. So aim for a center positive one. That's all you're really gonna need. So that's what's gonna drive our power supply. And ultimately we're gonna end up with a 12 volt connection coming into the back of the console and running the whole show. So how do we make it all work? Well, first thing we do is we plug in the power supply and we check it's working. So put your multimeter on DC um, on an appropriate range, center positive, so we should get 12 volts, which we do, step one. Step two, plug it into your mini ATX power supply and see what happens. Now, I went through this on, a, on the Saturn video, um, but I'm gonna demonstrate it again quickly this time. So having a close look at your power supply connector, like the edge connector, you need to, I'm gonna put a graphic up on the screen as well. You need to orientate it so you've got the top left one is the pure square connector and the top right one has the rounded edges on the inside. Um, bottom left is purely square and the bottom right is the round. So the two squares on the left and the kind of roundy square ones on the right. Get it in that position first, components this side. Then we can compare that to our chart, which I've got on the screen. And we can see that the ground point is the bottom right corner. And just to begin with, the you know five volts is right there next to it. So we need to measure that and see what happens. So ground and five. And as you can see my multimeter there, sorry, we're not getting anything. And the entire board's disabled. So what we need to do initially to power this board up is short two pins together. So count down on this component side, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's the pin we're targeting. So 13, 14, 15, 16. Sorry, you just drifted out a shot there. That one there. And what we need to do is bridge that pin across to this pin. So these two here need to be bridged. 13, 14, 15, and 16. So 15 and 16, bridge those, and that will tell the power supply to come to life. It just simulates it being plugged into a motherboard. That's what this is all designed to do, is to plug into a motherboard. So trust me on that one. Short those two pins together with a bit of solder, and then we'll test again. What I like to do to make that shorting job a lot easier is just get a small piece of wire, um, completely strip it, twist up the ends, uh, and then we tin, tin the piece of wire uh, really coat it in solder, and then we can just bridge that straight across. You can do it without the wire, but it's a little bit fiddly actually, and bridging that sort of distance with just the soldering iron, uh, it can be trial and error, but whatever you find easier, and I'll just solder that across the pins and trim it to the right size. Okay, so with that soldered in place, you'll just have a bridge across these pins here. So one, two, the third and the fourth pin down. Bridge that and let's test again. So plug our multimeter and power supply all back together. Grab ground from the bottom left and now we've got five volts on there. And you know what, we can pick another pin. We've got minus 12 up there. We've got 3.3 up the top and so forth. So our power supply has come to life and now we can really tap off those voltage points in and use them as necessary. Okay, so that's your step one. Let's pull this back apart. Step two is to completely remove this plastic clip on the back. We don't need that and it's in the way. So get yourself a pair of flush cutters and that goes flying. So cut that off, get rid of it and it just makes it a lot easier to install in the board. So we put our plastic shield back in. We're gonna sit the power supply um, around about here, we're going to be soldering off some of these points and running wires to the pins. Um, we're ultimately going to wrap, wrap it around like that and out the back there. So we need to just work out 
how to secure this down in the board. Uh, and I'm thinking, you know, you could use a bit of tape on that. I'm thinking a cable tie actually. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut a hole through the plastic here and here and run it underneath this piece of metal. So we'll come back to that, but we should probably wire our wires in first and our connector in place. And then we'll come back and we'll secure that in place. Okay, so grab the uh, bunch of wires that came with your little Pico power supply. This is all designed for PC stuff. So it's, you know, Molex connectors and so forth. But we can use some of these outputs for the job we're doing today. So which way does that go? Plug that into your little board. And these ends now will become live with, uh, you know, voltages on them. So we're gonna to aim to keep some of these wires and use them on the board. So let's just work out what voltages they are and, and what we can use. So we know that black is gonna be ground, so let's just put a probe in ground. And let's measure the yellow wire on, on this left side. And we get uh, 12 volts, so that's really convenient. We'll use that. And the reds are gonna be five, so we got five there. So that's a good first step. 12 volt is yellow. 5 volt is red and we're going to just take 3.3 volts off one of these solder points as we said before and you'll find that on this top component side that one down the bottom there is 3.3 that's where I'm going to take it and just run the wire um, to the pinouts look at the diagram that I put up before take 3.3 and we're going to go from there I'm just going to use the orange wire probably solder it into that point down there and that becomes our 3.3. So then we're gonna have all three voltages we need, 12 on the yellow, five on the red, 3.3 on the orange, and of course black will be our ground. We're gonna then solder that to our header connector, uh, and the header connector will just connect straight onto our pins. So that's the theory, let's get on with it. Okay, so before you go any further here, disconnect your power. You don't want the board live uh, when you're doing mods to it. So especially this next section. So we're going to cut right through all these wires and just take them off, take the plugs off. So if that was live, you'd be short circuiting the board by doing this. So just be careful, disconnect it. Um, we don't need them anymore, but you know, you might want those connectors for another project. So hang on to them. Uh, there is two yellows, two 12 volts, uh, not the end of the world. We may as well just tie them together and use them together. That's completely fine, it's parallel, so we'll still get 12 volts. Um, in theory, we'll get a higher current supply, so that's completely fine. Let's do a rough fin stall. Do it. I think it's better to sit it that way. That's obviously gonna go out the back. Might just trim them down a little bit, and then we'll put them on the header. So all of those can be trimmed just a touch. take all that off and we may as well start stripping these back and preparing them for the connectors so just get yourself a wire stripper strip them back and we're going to solder them into our little connectors let's start the soldering so I recommend at this point get yourself one of these little uh, uh, alligator clip holder things I don't know what they're actually called a third set of hands so we'll, we'll, we'll clip it on like that. We'll solder some wires into this side here. So we're gonna break these off, the little metal tab as we go. Uh, but for now, it's a nice little way to do this. So start off by heating up the element, putting in a bit of solder, just hold it there and let it really soak in. We'll just kind of tin these up. Okay, so then the way I like to do this is crimp a bit of solder into the secondary crimp as your third hand. Uh, set yourself up however is comfortable. Tin your wire just to get some solder onto the wire and put it in. Try and get it so the plastic casing on the wire is actually inside the crimp. Oh, it's was a bit shaky there. Uh, then we're gonna crimp that over. So I think you can see that. Um, it's not that interesting to watch me do all this, so I'll just get on with it. With the two 12s, as I said, look, they can just be joined together. It doesn't matter. So let's finish that one off. All 
Okay, so with those all soldered in place, um, you probably best to grab yourself a little needle nose plier and just sort of fold over the crimping ends of these. We've already made a pretty solid connection, so it doesn't really matter about the crimping too much, but you may as well crimp it down the best that you can. Just like that. Just aim to crimp, as I've done with that orange wire there, just get it nice and crimped over, and it adds a bit more strength to the whole thing. Then break off you know, the first connector. So we'll just start with the orange 3.3. So he's broken off and we're gonna feed it into our header connector. So uh, to find the position, we go back to our power supply and uh, the first one we're gonna do on the very left here is 3.3 volts. So that's gonna go um, in the header first. These headers have got a uh, groove, like, kind of slits on one side and soldered on the other. So the side with a slit goes to this side here of the pin with a little uh, notch poking up. That actually uh, grabs into it and it, um, and it sort of forms a nice uh, solid lock. So we're gonna pick the left one because that's the left position for 3.3. The notch facing up, I'm just gonna slide it all the way in and it should click into place. And there it goes. So you can see it's popped up through there and that's like a factory job. So that's what we're aiming for. So just as I said before, just slot them all in into the correct order. So left is 3.3 as I've done there. Red will be next at five volts. Uh, we've actually got three grounds. Um, I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. And then the yellow, the two yellow 12s will be on the end. So just finish wiring up your connector and then we're pretty close to putting it all in. Okay, so with that all soldered into place, you're gonna have uh, your wires connected in the right order, 3.3 orange, five volts red, uh, ground on the third pin. Um, I also put the connector in that fourth pin and then the next ground, and I joined all three grounds together. So you'll see mine, look, it's a little bit messy, but uh, the grounds joined together and they also joined the center ground. So. You know, you, you've got two ground wires, you may as well use them, one for each pin, and the third one in the middle, just sort of join them all together with a, another strand of wire and you should be fine. All three are ground and that's fine. And then the two 12s uh, just join up to the one connector on the far edge. So before you plug it into your console, uh, plug in your ground, we may as well use that, that center pin to test it, to make sure we've got that right. Uh, basically put your multimeter on DC and just walk through the voltages and make sure you've got them all correct. So 3.3, yeah, it's gonna say a little bit higher. That's what happens when these things are not loaded and connected to anything, so that's fine. Five volts on this pin. Uh, these are all, these two are ground, so they'll have no reading. And then 12 on the end. So there you go. So make sure your, your wires are all connected. Measure it at this end, on the actual connector end. Make sure everything's good. Uh, Make sure you get the voltages you expect. If you're getting other voltages than those, then there's probably a short circuit or something's not right. Uh, on the board itself, that's where I took 3.3 from, just the bottom edge down there. Uh, that's on the chart. It's a nice, easy spot to take it from. I think it works really well. And it's going to sit in something like that. So, this will then plug straight on, so that fits really nicely, straight onto the onto the header. Uh, you know, we could have made these wires a touch shorter, but you know what, it doesn't really matter. I might, um, I might cable tie them together or something like that, just to keep them neat, or twist the whole lot up, you know, something like that. Um, but that's pretty good for now. I think we'll go, let's go ahead and mount this. So we need to cut some holes um, in the plastic around about, around about there. So just mark that, just scratch it up. And on that side there, just mark that. Pull that out. Let's quickly cut some holes in there. We'll mount that in place with a cable tie. Tidy up the rear socket connector and we're good to go. We'll mount our GD-ROM and we'll give this a test. So we're almost there. 
okay, so I ended up uh, drilling those holes. It was a lot easier. I started to cut it out like a nice little square with an exacto knife bit. This is quite tough plastic, so it was easier just to drill it. Just put it on a bench and just drill straight through. So it's gonna sit like that, and we're gonna run a cable tie under those pieces of metal. So let's do that. Just grab yourself a, a cable tie, poke it under the board. It will come straight through. Luckily, there's nothing really in the way, so just pull up the cable tie. Like that. Pull it all the way through. Thread it through your piece of plastic. Sit it back down and our board will sit in like so. And we can just strap him in like a seat belt. So just to you know, adjust the whole thing as you see necessary. Um, I might do it like that. Clamp it down and you're pretty much done. So it doesn't have to be stupid tight, just uh, reasonably firm so nothing moves. Clip off your uh, excess, flush cut it. And that's really stable. That's not going anywhere. It's protected with plastic. All our wires are quite neat. Um, and then it's just our rear connector. So the rear connector is very straightforward, but we just do one extra step. So we're basically gonna mount the connector into the original power supply position. It's going to go in there. Um, now the original has obviously a rectangle end on it where the power plug plugs in. So we have to sort of replace that. So I've come up with this little uh, 3D printed adapter. Uh, I've designed and made this myself. Uh, this will be supplied in the kit if you wanna buy one of my power supply kits. Otherwise you can just quickly make this yourself if you have a 3D printer. Pull that apart. That sits in flush in, into the back there. It's quite recessed. Then we get a little bit sticking through. Um, you can use the washer if you want, it doesn't really matter. And then simply tighten that down. Use a, use a little pliers to put some lock on it. And then basically that's going to slot into the back position like so, and it's gonna sit like that. So we have a nice, neat um, rear connector and the top case also slots onto the top of that. Uh, and I find that just a nice, simple, easy way to do it. But before we finish that job off, we need to reincorporate the power switch somehow. So I'll show you how to do that. So we may as well screw this switch back into place. So grab your two screws that we pulled out earlier, put the switch back in. So basically all the switch is doing is as you push the button down, it joins these two wires together basically at the, at the output. And it's basically short circuiting these two pins together, which enables the power supply. So all I'd recommend we do is cut this white connector off completely. So let's cut that off to begin with. Put that back on your board for safekeeping. So that goes together as a kit. You know, you can always revert this back to stock by resoldering the wires, keep the part together. Um, and then what we're gonna do on this end, make sure you're not connected with power as you do this. Just cut the, uh, the 12 volt feed um, somewhere, it doesn't really matter, towards the, uh, towards the opening here. And we're basically just gonna splice it. So strip the ends off both ends, strip the ends off the switch. And you guessed it, one wire to each wire. And that's how we complete the circuit. That's all there really is to it. You don't really need to go to much more detail than that. So arguably this could be really cut down. These wires are huge. So um, we could even tuck that underneath the plastic to be honest, but Let's just get it working for now, um, and you can tidy it up in your own time. It doesn't matter which wire goes where, we're just completing the circuit. So I'll quickly solder this into place, one on each end, and I'll show you the finished product. 
Okay, so with those wires joined, obviously don't forget to put your heat shrink on the gray wires first. Uh, I've just used two bits of red. Put it on first, obviously, before you solder it. Slide it over your solder joint. Um, and then we're gonna just crimp that down just to give it a bit of protection. So that's it. Just heat the, sh the shrink up, shrink it down. And that's about it. We're done, we're ready to test. Look, the wires are all a little bit long, so you know you can trim them as to your preference. But it's going to sit like this, and then you're, you're done. So the mod is there, is, is basically complete. We've got the correct voltages feeding to our connector, and we've got a nice free space to put our GD-ROM drive in. So let's do that. I'll get the, the GD-ROM, I'll pull it out of here quickly, out of the white one. We'll put it in, and we'll give it a test. Okay, so I've pulled out my GD EMU out of the, the power console. Um, now you can just go ahead and put that straight in, but an optional extra right now is a 3D printed support and SD card holder, um, as well as uh, a top shield. Um, where did I put the top shield? Here it is. This top shield here, which goes into the lid. So I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this is optional, you don't need to do this, but it just basically sits right there. You grab one of the original three screws that came out of the GD ROM drive, put it in the back. There's a spot for that to screw straight back into the board, exactly where it came out. So screw that in, that holds the piece of plastic in place. And then our board here will then uh, screw into these two mounts up here, maybe even the third one. So. I wouldn't over tighten this one. Just okay, and then underneath the lid, uh, we just mount our support here. Uh, that's just a bit of overspray for some, from some plastic conditioner, those spots, it's not water, so that's fine. It just basically sits in like that, um, just sits there. It's, it sort of goes over this round connector. And when it's uh, screwed down to the, to the rest of the case, that all gets held in nicely. So we'll lift the lid. Try and get everything to line up. And we've got to pay attention to our rear connector, our 3D printed one. That fits over that nicely. And then, there you go, it all locks down. And we're left with, uh, I don't know if you can see that properly. Um, the 3D printed tray goes right around all edges. And what that basically does is, as you're you know removing the SD and playing around and swapping the cards over, uh, that you don't accidentally drop it and have it go down inside the case because, you know, that's a real pain. You've got to unscrew the whole lid to get it. So, you know, that's one of the main features is it just protects the whole inside and stops you losing your cards. So that's mine pretty much done. Um, I will just put a quick screw in just to hold it together and then we'll give it a test. Okay, so I've plugged it in. I've got the VGA connector in the back. I've got my 12 volt feed into our new socket, which is nice and tidy. I've um, just got two screws holding the case together. Uh, I'm gonna plug in a controller in the front. I've just got a white controller. If anyone's got a black Sega sports matching controller, a Dreamcast controller that they wanna sell me, I'll gladly buy that off you. Um, I really want one to match, so I'm looking for one. Uh, just post down in the comments and, uh, you know, I'll pick that up. So let's give it a shot. Um, I've got my monitor in front of me, switched over to VGA, powered on. We're getting a light, we're getting a fan, and we're getting Dreamcast. So it works really well. It's just that easy, guys. Um, don't, you know, don't mess about with uh, step-down transformers and that sort of stuff. It just doesn't really... Um, this doesn't really matter, you know, it, it's a waste of time. When the mod to do this is so easy, I'll just quickly set the date. So we're gonna test out our new battery here, setting the correct date and time, uh, which is pretty cool. And we'll see if it remembers that next time. All right, so we're off and running. We're going to fire up the first game, which is the menu system on GD EMU. And 
there it is. So I've only got a couple of games installed there from the last video. But that is all working, guys. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope that was pretty easy to follow. I think it was. Um, reasonably step by step. Uh, if you like that, let me know in the comments. If you didn't like it, also let me know. And I'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.